So mindfulness is like when you're watching the mind, right? Meditation is your remembrance that there is no mind. Hey guys, welcome to our Soul Fan podcast where I interview space holders from all over the world. I'm your host, my name is Carolina, and I am the Connection Catalyst. I help spiritual entrepreneurs experience deeper connection with themselves, with others, and with the whole universe. Today on the show, we have Savannah, the medicine woman, the empath method, and drum rolls, the baby healer teacher. <laughs> I love this. Welcome to the show, Savannah. How are you doing? I'm great. Thank you for having me. I am so excited to talk to you and to discover what these identities mean, the baby healer teacher and the medicine woman, what kind of medicines you work with and everything. Like mm. I know that you're a beautiful, conscious entrepreneur as well, so we have a lot to talk about. But I would love to start with your journey. How did you get inspired to do this work, to be a healer, to be a medicine woman? What has brought you? And was it always within and or, you know, since childhood or did something happen in your life? to be on this mm -hmm. path i'm super mm -hmm. curious yeah yeah so let me first define what why i would call myself a medicine woman right um so <laughs> you have such yang energy and i just come in like ooh, we got the yin energy here um so medicine woman uh in most definitions and my definition is a healer who has spiritual medicine who brings a restoration of love, of order, and of harmony in their community. So very much I have like um, an oath to do so, to, to be a light worker in this way. But the type of light worker that a medicine worker is, is a shadow worker. So we deal pretty much, I like to say, with people's shittiest shit. <laughs> you know what I mean? Oh, yes. Like, I we're the there so. in the trend. Totally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we're we're in the trenches like with you you know and just and just uh showing you what we've done you know it's very much a life to live um by example and so it's like you know if you want to be a guide in the shadows then you need to know it forwards backwards upside down in the dark blind blind right so you're gonna spend a lot of time there um <laughs> it's kind of i think there's there's so much in like the the side of like online spiritual community where it's um where it's more of a gimmick and not really they're not actually with it they just kind of like the aesthetic of it that there's um kind of a in this these sort of areas there's like a, a glorification of like what it means to be a shaman or a shamanic practitioner or a medicine woman or a healer but truly like this is a path of it is extremely intense path it's a fire path and so um yeah so i've i've been this way I've, I've held this vibration to do this work and that i'm meant for this work since i was born very much so actually when i was very young when i was three and a half almost four i died in surgery and i came back and i remember it and i've lived my whole life after that <laughs> so i don't really remember before because i was so young um and so yeah, I've definitely, I have memories of like four or five years old being outside and being like, and feeling the wind in my hair and being like, uh-huh, something is going, so there's some, there's more here than everybody else around me is, I, I, I'm picking up on something, uh, but um, I was very much indoctrinated in the fundamentalist um, evangelical Christian church. Um, and that's no hate to people who love Jesus or even like Christians themselves. I have no, you know, that's, that's a whole other topic if you wanted to get into that can of worms. But, um, through that, a lot of, there was just a lot of forgetting, you know, and conditioning in myself. Um, so fast forward my entire childhood, everything, my school, my obviously church, um, all of my friends was within the church. Like everybody belonged to that. So I don't, I didn't know any different. Right. Um, and you know, there was a lot of shame and guilt and et cetera, that was th thrust upon me in that, um, a lot. If you have religious trauma, you know what I'm talking about. Um, especially with stuff like purity culture as a, as a woman. Yeah. I, I, it's good to know that like so many people can res resonate with that. Um, and so, so then 
when I went to university and I was 19 years old, I went into a crystal shop for the first time. So I'm about to be 28, right? So it's been some time. And I went into a crystal shop for the first time and I realized that the place, this place, the, the Satan crystal shop, uh, the, the devil, uh, I went in there and <laughs> I went in there and I was like, wait a minute, this is awesome. Like, what? Uh, where's the evil? Like, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm a little daunted. I'm a little scared because I've been taught to be scared of this place. But like, I am feeling great in here. Like, I'm loving this. And so that day I picked up a book on Feng Shui actually and space clearing because it, you know, it was still comfortable for me. It wasn't too out there. It was just about, um, you know, like moving your furniture and like having a better home, which as a Virgo who Virgo rules, uh, health and home, anything to do with the home. I'm like, yes, yes. Improvement of how it feels in the room I'm there. And so that's actually how I got started in energy work. How many years ago, eight years ago, um, was through Feng Shui. And I, I still practice very much Feng Shui. I love it. I teach it. It's awesome. Um, but then, uh, you know, I dabbled here and there. My friends knew me as like that weird crystal girl. And um, I still went through with my university degree. Uh, my, so my degree is in chemical engineering, which is so funny to me because like chemistry is just like potions. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was just like, I, I think I can get on with this because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. How, how, how do you know that? That age, you know, what to do with the rest of your life. And, you know, I was already on the conveyor belt of the matrix, right? And so I went through the degree. I worked there a couple of years. I actually worked for a defense contractor. So basically it was just like forever because I'm very sensitive. I'm very like empathic person. I'm very psychic person, just super sensitive. And so much of that had been like squashed and repressed and just beat out of me, right? If you're an empath, you know what I'm talking about. Uh, and so I was just living this life that was like a complete lie so that I could see if I was worthy of the love and acceptance of everyone. Mm. Meanwhile, I'm like not loving, I love it, accepting myself, obviously. Right. So I, yeah, I worked at it for a defense contractor in the U S so basically, uh, contributing to the United States military, kind of the opposite of peace and love. Right. Um, <laughs> contributing <laughs> to literal war. <laughs> Uh, and so, and this is the super readers digest, like there's men and relationships involved here that I'm not even going to touch on. Um, cause that's, you know, I don't want to spend forever telling you my story, but, um, so then it just got, oh, I got really sick. That's what happened. This is a common thing for people who are called to a medicine path is that they're going to have, um, a very real physical like 3d as much as it's 5d experience of uh an initiation and one of the ways one of the ways that the universe can initiate you because you can train in shamanic practices all day long but you have to be kind of like chosen by the universe to do something like this and i'll tell you the reason you have to be chosen is because you know, like I said, there's this glorification, glamorization of what I do, but it's, you probably know, you probably know, um, I don't, if, if you knew what was actually up beyond the glamorization, no one would choose this for themselves. It's very much a soul contract, right? No, like you would only choose this if it was where you belonged, mm -hmm. you know, like you couldn't do anything else. And so yeah so i i like to say that i got dragged off of the path i was on because i was i was ignoring right i was shutting it all down i was ignoring it i had crazy anxiety i would be hospitalized for panic attacks because of how suppressed and just dysregulated that i was from living this lie as someone who's not supposed to be where i was at all and uh so yeah i like to say that i got snatched by my hair and dragged <laughs> to this path they were like I, I well so i got really sick right and that was kind of the beginning of the end um of my old life and yeah i was very sick i had no energy i would sleep like 14 hours a day for a year and a half with a mystery illness that 
the doctors could not explain every special every specialist I went to they could not explain it I was just my cells were just completely run down I was so just like I had a cough for like a year I had like a wet nasty I was just like fucking sick and my hair fell out actually it was like a fourth of my hair head was just completely bald um, like my hair was just like f- that's how sick I was everything was just like so inflamed that like my hair was just like gone <laughs> uh, so it's all back now it's crazy uh, it's, it's some of it you can actually see there's a couple shorter pieces like this um, but yeah it was just like completely bald um, sit like no energy um, no brain fog no mental capacity just like <laughs> and and through that I, I got so miserable I hated my job and my entire life my relationship um I was so anxious I was so sick I, I cried out to the universe and I was like I know I'm not where I'm supposed to be I know that you know that so please like help me put me on the right path I'll do whatever you want so <laughs> now looking back it's not a great idea to tell the universe, like, hey, just fuck me up, fam. Like, that's not a good <laughs> idea, because they will take you on, <laughs> they will take you on the shortest path, even if it's, like, the most painful path. <laughs> you know, like, like when you're going to ask something big like that, make sure you say, uh, should it harm none, you know, should I... I don't want to suffer through this because I suffered. Um, <laughs> uh, but, you know, all's well that ends well, I guess. Uh, so I ended up quitting my engineering job and career. My nobody, everyone around me thought I was fucking nuts, and I was. Um, I was definitely very, like, suicidal ideation at that time. My mental health was shit. My physical health was shit. My spiritual health was shit. Um, everything in my life was shit. I kind of hit, like, rock, rock bottom, somewhere in the middle of that dark night of the soul where I was sick for the year and a half. And, um, it continued, the dark night continued and pretty much that year and a half of just being like sick for no fucking reason, just so sick for no fucking reason. Um, and now I'm I'm completely healthy. There's nothing wrong with me. It's crazy. Um, and when I started, when I really, really stepped onto this path, which was December, 2019, um, I quit my job, March, 2019, December, 2019, when I finally really, truly relented, committed, said, I'm done with my shit. I'm done with my ego. Like. I'm ready to listen. I'm ready. I'm ready. Like I will do this for the rest of my days and I will heal. Basically I will heal. I will answer the call. I will do it. Whatever. And like for real, for real. Um, because the first time I said that, you know, that's when the storm really came. And then I was kind of like, Oh, this sucks. This is stupid. And it's kind of like, you're neither here nor there. You know, you can't go back to your old, life but you also can't there's nowhere to go forward yet um but when i started when i went went to the city yes december 2019 then i really started going forward and the rest has been history let me tell you it's it's insane um so there's a lot that's happened since then obviously this is the path that i walk is a fire path it's very quick i make quantum leaps all the time um and that's not a brag right there i'm just saying like the person that I was six months ago is not me now. The person before that six months was not the same person. Like, it's just like, just, it's a fire path. You're getting renewed by the flame. It's just a constant cycle of like birth and redeath. Birth, death and rebirth. There we go. Um, and so, you know, I'm very comfortable now with, with things like death and birth. Um, one of my aspirations in the future after I give birth is to be a birth doula. And I got to being an empath. So that's kind of my medicine woman story, I suppose. Um, I've done this work for many lifetimes, but that's just this lifetime story. Uh, empath mentor, um, how did I get to be that? It's, I, I stepped up to the plate to be the person that I needed throughout all of that because I was completely alone through all of that. Not you know, I had, I had my best friend, I had my partner, which we had, we met my partner and I, we met the day I quit my engineering job. That was the, and and shut down that part of my life is when I met him. It's like super twin flame connection. That's another topic. Um, so that's kind of uh, you know, and the rest has really been history. Just co collaborating with Spirit ever since then. It's been two and a half years. Yeah, 
Um, and what I've been able to heal through and grow through and expand my consciousness through, um, expand my heart, open up my heart through, and he just heal my body, heal my nervous system, heal my chakras. Uh, and, and what I've been able to help others with through that as well is like, it's two and a half years. Like, I feel like I've done the work of 10 years already. Mm. Yeah, I can so relate I can't to that. wait for the rest. <laughs> when you do yeah, quantum leaps, that's what so that, <laughs> mm -hmm. that's that's how I got here. And I just I just it's basically since the moment I said to spirit, like I'm like take me, I surrender, I offer my life as a, in service. Uh, in March 2019, at the bottom of my my sickness, from that moment on, it's just been like all right, like pew. <laughs> so like it's so it's so amazing for those healers and empaths who are out there who are afraid to answer their calling like you have no idea you're about to be slingshot through this amazing ride through the cosmos mm, wow it's not always comfortable but it's awesome yes absolutely but you need to really surrender to what the universe has for you because otherwise you're gonna just block with your doubts with your fears with your attachments with whatever and when you just fully let it go then when when it then it comes just so easily right yeah and well for me i needed to be pushed to that point of surrender you know what i mean they needed to kind of strip me <laughs> in a way because i was gonna just like suppress myself forever i think so i mean if you're already listening to a podcast like this then you're already on your way mm -hmm. absolutely and it's it's so nice to hear your story because i can relate to so many things like for example when i first bought crystals for my friends are you carola why are you giving me a stone like what the hell is going on like why are you crazy or you know i also did a master i'm a master of sustainable energy so also engineering and i'm still mm -hmm. working with the energy is just the human energy and also sustainable but it's just a completely different path and and I also was just like, I had my uh, spiritual awakening between my um, engineering, like the, the first level bachelor and then between my bachelor and master's and all my master I was just like mm -hmm. okay I know that this doesn't really matter anymore but I'm still gonna flow through it and just travel and whatever so I can relate to a lot of your story which is really really cool but I really love how you say like you needed to just be so stripped away of everything that you're just like okay universe take me because I think that for a lot of people and I think for me also I had to have some health issues to really fully understand where people that I'm helping are coming from like I had to um, wake up with pain in my stomach or my intestines every day for a long time maybe like a year or so also to know okay this is how you heal this is how I manage my energy this is what I need to do to get out of it and now I'm super healthy I can you know I live my life uh, in complete like yeah bliss and it's just amazing and um, but I feel like it's so important for us to really go through as you said, the shadows go through the healing to be able to help other people do the same. And for me, the medicines like, for example, um, psilocybin or, or other types of medicines were really helpful to, to get to the darkest places sometimes. And so I'm really curious, what kind of medicine do you work with usually? Like, what is your favorite? Oh, you little mushy. It's cute. <laughs> uh, my favorite, I, I work mostly uh, with Ayurveda. Um, I work medicine um ceremonies and most of most of my work is definitely centered around um shadow work mm -hmm. and yeah. that's most of my medicine yeah and that's, so that's the deepest that's, um <laughs> the, it's the it's the less glamorous one right <laughs> you know like do doing uh you can have big quantum leaps with plant medicine but when you and I'm not saying that you need to or should remove it from your life, but when you do and you heal just like completely sober, that is like, it's like raw dogging it. It's, it's, in, it's intense, you know? So, um, most of my medicine is, is very intuitively gifted and very energy based. It's similar, similar to Reiki. It's mm -hmm. the same source energy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I can relate to that because I also uh, do the shadow work with my clients and with myself as well. And I feel like the more you do it, the more you are also 
happy to go into the deeper and deeper shit because you know, your nervous system is like, yeah, okay, we've been through that. We can go deeper this time. And the more you heal, the more you also get excited, I feel, like, because you're like, okay, I'm triggered now. Let's go into the shit and be on the other side of it. And my life is going to be way better after that. So I guess it's also about like getting used to the, the shadows and then it's not actually that scary anymore. And I feel at least that's what I found for myself. And so I would love to uh, ask now about this baby healer teacher identity that you have because I think it's so cute how you describe it so what does it mean to be a baby healer teacher to you well this is just the, the way that that started and how it became like the baby healer teacher uh, or empath mentor you might say is this is just the type of person that just flocks to me they, they come in droves they're just like I just found out that I'm starseed I just found out I'm an empath I just found out that I'm psychic. Uh, what the fuck do I do? And I'm like, come, come, come here. <laughs> come, come on mom's lap. And so that's how that started. Um, I have an app. It's similar to what you were describing for the soul fam, uh, the soul fam vision. We have, we have an app, we have live classes five nights a week. Um, we have that thousands of hours of, content courses, uh, different guided meditations, binaural beats, etc. in the app, and we have a beautiful community. So that's kind of like where the, that's kind of like the den for the babies. And then I'm kind of like the den mother. That's, that's kind of a weird way to describe it because we're all equals, you know what I mean? I'm just a little further along the path. And so I also would describe it as being like, for the healers that the earth needs so much that so many of them are waking up right now. Um, and we need them in this, like in like a spiritual warfare sense, almost, um, I don't not warfare, but you see what, you know what I mean? Uh, then I'm like the, I'm like the boot camp general. I'm the boot cat camp captain. Uh, so I love it. I love it. It's, <laughs> I just, yeah, I just, it was just like, I'm telling you, once I said yes to my calling, everything just fell into place like dominoes. And this was one of those things. And so if, uh, I have all 200-ish people right now in the community um, that are very much like beginner. And then another 20, so like what's that, 10% 10, 10 of those people are more intermediate and they're training in my intuitive academy, mm -hmm. which where I'm teaching like everything that I know. Um, so it's only been two and a half years, but it's a lot. <laughs> That's it's amazing. That's really amazing. So. And one of the things that you teach in your intuitive academy, I know, is daily energetic hygiene. So I wanted to ask you, like, what is your favorite practice for this hygiene that people should do that you recommend the most? Yeah, this is something that my students learn in week one because it's so important. It's If you're going to be working with energy, you need to know how to keep yourself clean, you know? Like... Otherwise, you're gonna you're gonna have a really bad time. You're gonna get sick. You're gonna get anxiety. You're, gonna, you're just gonna feel bad. You're gonna feel out of alignment. You're gonna feel ungrounded, out of your body, in your mind. And then when you're in your mind, what happens? Do, 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 like stressy, depressy, right? Uh, so I teach it in five steps. Um, it will it blends with some of the other things that I teach, um, and the, these things can also blend within themselves or rather, um, you know, two or three of the five can be done with like one action. Uh, so I teach it in five steps so just so you can understand what's going on here. And how did I, how did I make this up? Um, I just started doing it myself. I didn't, it was, I'm, so I'm in like a long term apprenticeship, shamanic apprenticeship now, um, like years, but before I found my teacher, then am I, you know, before my teacher found me, then I was just, I didn't know what I was doing, but I was doing it. I actually taught myself how to read, like do psychic readings with my singing bowls. It was just a lot of experimentation that I was just like, I don't know. I'm just going to try it and see what happens. I just kind of intuitively knew how to do it. Super. I, I don't know how to explain that. I didn't have a teacher for the first year of the journey. Um, but so this is kind of like what I made up in that time that I noticed what was like a complete set of when I'm taking myself to, from feeling ungrounded, feeling 
anxious, feeling disconnected, being in fear, often being an ego, and shifting that, getting rid of, realigning, um, refilling back up with light and, and shielding. So in the process, and you can do this anywhere from five to 20 minutes. This doesn't take very long. I recommend it on a daily basis. And after, if you're practicing after that, maybe. Um, but this is, this is kind of like, I'm a big, something I teach my students a lot is about filling your cup and protecting your energy. Because if you don't do those two things, you can't practition. Well, you can practice, but you're going to have a really bad time. You're not going to be very effective. Um, and that's just, <laughs> that's just, I know I'm like, you know, I don't make the rules. I'm just telling you from my experience and what I've seen in my students and peers. Um, so yeah, from, from just being in that gross energy of like, stuck in fear out of your body to fully aligned present powerful channeling like ready to go and so it, it is as follows and this is not in a particular order that this is usually the order that i do this in um so first is to uh, first actually might be to ground myself um, if I was going to put it in a word, this is what I put it in. So this is to put your feet on the earth to electrically, physically ground yourself. Um, it can also be done through like a delicious hot meal. For the most part though, like you want to be grounding yourself with nature. That's like the most effective one. So you might take a dip in a river or a lake or an ocean. You might um, put your back against a tree. You might walk barefoot on the earth or even lie on the earth. Um, you might bask in the sun, right? I'm just to get the four naturally occurring elements. You might put the, the top down on your car and let the wind come when you're driving somewhere or open the windows or just, you know, if it's very windy, allow the wind to come. Um, so that first is we gotta be in, we gotta come back into our body and those, you know, using the four naturally occurring elements will better, very much do that. Uh, so ground yourself first and then as you begin to ground, you'll notice you start kind of going into the second one, which is clearing. And so this is like things that are kind of stuck in your aura or things that are stuck in your chakras or anywhere really. Um, if it's like something sad or nervous it might be here, sad might be here. Um, something that you're afraid to say or something that you lied about will be here. Uh, and so just once we're grounding and we're kind of coming into a little bit of stillness with this practice, even if it's five minutes, everything that's been bothering you that you've been ignoring that's been making you feel bad, it's going to come right to your awareness because you're finally looking at it. Taking a minute to be still and look at it, it's going to be like, you know, sometimes when I feel stressed, I feel it right here. I feel like I kind of have other people's burdens on me. So I will kind of like pull it off. Um, and it can a very a great way to clear can also be just like gathering it up in the body like like a like you're taking paper and bunching it together with an inhale and then on an exhale like intending it for it to release and go and doing that couple rounds um, so you can clear with the breath you can uh, you can clear like even with you know how you have you have like sprays like clearing sprays you can have just a little like you know, let it go. If you, if you run Reiki or you're any type of energy worker, there's many different ways to clear the energy. This is just some ideas for those who maybe are not um, trained in that. Uh, and then, so after we've grounded, we've cleared our energy. Now is when I would start to meditate. So this is phase three. Um, honestly, the, the time I'm a Virgo, I, uh, I like time things. Uh, so I find seven to eight minutes is the minimum. You can go all the way up through 20. You could go to 30. I don't usually do 30. I'm usually like 15 is my magic number. Um, so I will meditate then, which is just to, it's not the same as mindfulness. Mindfulness is when you're noticing your thoughts, which sometimes you need to pass through mindfulness to get to true meditation, which is theta waves in the brain. But, um, so mindfulness is like when you're watching the mind, right? Meditation is your remembrance that there is no mind. And that's why I'm saying that it's minimum of seven to eight minutes. That's usually the portion where your mind is still like, bup, 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 bup. 
it's in beta waves. It's in the waking phase, right? And it just needs to come into, it takes, it takes a second to transition, right? And so that's why I say 15 minutes, because it's like 15 minutes calming and then, or sorry, seven to eight minutes calming and then seven to eight minutes just being there and, and like connecting with the truth of your being, which is there is no time, there is no space. When you truly get into it, it, can, it goes like that, right? Uh, so one way to start getting into meditation is I love to listen on these headphones to 528 Hertz music. It's all over YouTube um, for free. And I love also just focusing and feeling the sensation of the breath. You will have grounded at this point and cleared out your shit. So we're actually ready to meditate, right? And so after you meditate, then I will do the fourth phase, which is um, the fourth step, which is I call it alignment or fortification. And this is where I am. The way that I do it is I'm reaching up into the eighth chakra and I'm taking that like source energy and I'm putting it into each of my spaces and kind of like, you know, you can also do this with a visualization where you're visualizing your chakras, like looking their color, looking beautiful, spinning well in the clockwise motion. And so just kind of like a, like a chakra, fortification, realignment, right? And then the final phase is all our hard work. We want to protect it. We want it to last when we're going places. And so then I will shield my energy. There's a couple ways to do that, but I do it um, energetically. You can also do it with black crystals. You can also do it with veiling the head with a scarf. This is like veiling the crown. Um, so yeah. That is a, the daily energetic hygiene. It, it takes me about, I'm pretty quick these days, right? Um, I'd say I spend 25 to 30 minutes a day. I mean, I work in this, right? Uh, 25 to 30 minutes a day where I am taking care of my hygiene. And it is literally the entire quality of my life. Mm. <laughs> is that 25, 30 minutes a day? Mm -hmm. I can relate to that because when I start my day with meditation and yoga and dancing and just practices that get me into the body and connect me to my soul, it's like a Love whole dancing. different day, whole different day than when I don't. It's just mm -hmm. seriously just setting up the whole day in a different energy and uh, you are just feeling this connection to your soul. And I loved everything that you shared. It's so beautiful how you just can put it in steps because uh, I feel like for people who are more in the logic and in the I'm mind, like, they have <laughs> steps to follow. It's mm -hmm. actually easier. It's like, okay, now we do this, now we do this, now we do that. So that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. And uh, I'm uh, really curious as yeah. well because I know that you're very much an entrepreneur and uh, you know, you're very conscious and entrepreneur and we need these conscious entrepreneurs out there to just show the regular muggles entrepreneur how to be a spiritual entrepreneur uh, so i'm super curious to know what is your number one tip or maybe top three if you'd like to share for spiritual entrepreneurs that you have seen you know you've worked with many people many healers coaches and so on and um, so what would you say is that your number one advice hmm, i'm not going to give advice actually do you mind if i give values perfect because if you're working in alignment with integrity and truth, then you don't even need a tip, right? Spirit's going to work with you. Very well. Absolutely. Um, so I'm just writing them down here so I remember all of what's coming to me. Um, I can talk about the energetics of money all day long. All day long. As an entrepreneur who's also an energy worker. It's, it's something that I'm extremely passionate about. Um, so I will, I will give, I lied. I will give a tip, um, <laughs> for those who are starting. Yeah. For those who are starting the ability to which you can facilitate healing in other people, that ceiling is exactly the ceiling of how much you have he done your own healing work. If you want to walk this path, you want to do this work, you will perpetually be going through, like I said, at the beginning cycles of, of death and rebirth, you will be doing your own healing all day long and twice on Sunday. So like be prepared for that. And for the people who are called to this path, it's kind of like, yeah, okay. Sounds good. I'm made, you're made for this, you know, if you're, and, and that's, I said, I wouldn't give any tips. I see, yeah, I said, I would not give any tips, but, um, the second tip is if you're called to this path, there's nothing that's going to change that. You cannot run from it, but you cannot hide. <laughs> You can't. <laughs> so 
relent today. <laughs> I'll offer your heart as an, uh, an offering of love to all and, and of service with great boundaries. That's my third tip. Work on your fucking boundaries. You're a sensitive person and you want to be an entrepreneur. People are going to walk all over you to the extent that you allow them. So don't allow them almost anything. Keep always working on the boundaries. Always, always, always. Um, I can tell you, like, I'm a recovering people pleaser. Uh, very much so. But let me share with you the... So, so yeah, you're, if you're on this path, it's for you. Don't let anybody make you feel that your work is not legitimate. Okay? A thousand... 500 years ago, a thousand years ago, 300 years ago, when... The Western world lived in indigenous settings where we still had villages and such. The medicine person, the healer, they were very much centered in the society. Okay, so all of their needs were taken care of. They did not need to charge for their services, right? Because they were just kind of like, they're part of like the social program. <laughs> you know what I mean? They were just like included and they were supported and they had everything they needed to just do their thing, right? But that is not the case anymore in the Western world by a lot right that is pretty much the opposite we are that's a whole rabbit hole to get into why that is but um we are now the looney tunes right we're the outcasts we're the weird ones and so as we carve our way back into society as we heal and recover from the consequences of our actions as a collective uh and and the people like us pave the way back to healing and we carve our way back in do not let people who are still committed to existing in a system that doesn't work be the ones to tell you that you're not that your work is illegitimate it is not you know that you're illegitimate that your beliefs are illegitimate don't let the ones who are stuck make you think that you have to be stuck too when you're clearly your soul is wanting to shift into a new paradigm and and really it's an old paradigm just coming back in a higher more healed way but so that being said, um, and as it relates to entrepreneurship, we are no longer in the center of society. And so we are no longer supported by society. And what do we need? What is the practical thing that we need to survive in the society? It's currency, it's energy, it's money, which is an idea, but it's what we need, right? Uh, and so it is, it is exploitative to expect legitimate healers who do legitimate work, some of the most legitimate work, if you ask me, to expect them to work for free. It's exploitative. Everybody else gets paid except us. Why? Do not do not allow people to tell you what not to do if it's aligned with you. Don't, you know, don't take, this is my policy for myself. I don't take advice from people who I don't like, who I wouldn't want their life. Yeah, which is probably I most only of take the advice. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Even, even it can be family members where you're like, you look miserable. Why the fuck would I listen to you? Like you have the power and the choice to, to think that and say that. Um, and they're going to be mad and you know what? It's okay. Mm -hmm. Haters are going to hate. Yeah. Haters are how you know that you're doing something. Yeah. Right. And that's normal. And that's Take always, that with a great salt. There is always a polarity to mm -hmm. everything, right? So there are always going to be mm -hmm. people who are like, you are a shit or you are beautiful or you're a liar or whatever. Let God save you because you're yeah. satanic or whatever. Like I've got, you know, so many haters, even under just my ads of just sharing love and light and whatever. And there are always people uh, just talking shit. So we just need to deal with it. I mean, if you're on the path and you want to be out there somehow, you need to just deal with, accept that these haters are going to be there and that's all okay um which is really nice as well because as you get more and more of this you're just like yeah okay these people have their own projections they just project project their shit on me it has nothing to do with me i'm just here and i'm just doing what i do and they just project their, their thing and i'm probably projecting my things as well on on life and that's okay and then there it has nothing to do with us right so that's really good to know and uh, yeah that's a really beautiful tip actually uh, thank you so much for sharing that it's really really cool <laughs> and uh, i want to ask because because you say that you know the you're very familiar and really like talk a lot about money and how this energy of money is playing out so how do you feel like people are actually blocking this flow into their lives especially as spiritual entrepreneurs like what are the the limits the blocks the you know why 
don't spiritual entrepreneurs have the all the abundance that they want because i believe that everyone can have the abundance that they they desire it's just that they are putting limits in themselves the, by themselves probably by their mind and their doubts and their fears and so on um but yeah how to deal with that like what how would you what would you say so how to deal with it is a complex issue but i can explain first why it's happening um there's a practical and there's a more spiritual you might call a uh, reason the practical reason is humanity is being largely especially in the western world well really the whole thing but i'm thinking about capitalistic societies right now um, i call it the anglosphere the english speaking world um the people are being exploited right so there's that there's like actual real trauma surrounding money poverty right so there's there's a whole trauma healing thing trauma just really it adds extra steps and it complicates the healing process and it makes it longer it makes it harder um because of the amount of nervous system dysregulation it's a i'm not saying you can't heal from trauma you absolutely can it just makes it harder so you have people in deeper holes mm-hmm. right we have, we have some the depth of the hole is very greatly Many people are very much suffering financially right now, especially in the United States where I live. Oh my gosh. The rest of the world is looking at us like, what the fuck, right? <laughs> it's bad. It's really, it's, it's a collapsing empire. Uh, truly is what it is. But so there's that. So just know where you're at with that. Did you grow up in poverty? Are you still in poverty? That's going to tell you like, how difficult this is going to be. And that's not meant to discourage you. That's meant so we can know where we're at and know the truth and know, and then be able to work with that truth. Mm-hmm. So there's that. And the second thing is a lot of people are not ready to heal. A lot of people are not ready to give up their reality and the things that they identify with and have gotten to agreement with and continue to create from their identities that they don't even know are their identities most of the time. Right. Uh, so a lot of people like, being poor, not having money is part of their identity. They don't even realize that they're creating from that. And because, you know, their ego might be traumatized and uh, defending it, defending that identity can be very difficult. So it takes, if you want to heal, especially ancestral poverty trauma, if you want to step into abundance for real, like there, it's very possible but you have to be willing to actually let go of the, the, your identification with your pain because of that poverty. Yeah. So you gotta, you have to want it. And that's actually one of the values that I was going to talk about. I wrote down two of them. They're the only two coming to mind. So they're the ones for this podcast. Right. But one of them is, is about consent uh, for those who, who are looking to practice as a healer to become an entrepreneur in this way. Right. It's a, it's a very uh, masculine term of it, the entrepreneur. Right. It's just to support yourself because people used to, everybody used to just support themselves. The baker owned the bakery, the cobbler owned the shoe, like place. Everyone used to be an entrepreneur. If you're wanting to be that, then consent on your part and the person you're facilitating's part is extremely, extremely important because when someone is not ready for something, you can't make them. And even if they say that they're ready, but they don't actually mean it. And you know, they not aren't actually at that point where they are ready, willing, and able to do what it takes to heal because healing is not easy. Right. When we think of healing, we think like, I'm healing like a spa day. Uh, uh-uh, uh, uh-uh. healing is your snot is just <laughs> dripping out of your nose and you're like, <laughs> because you're crying so hard (laughs) that's healing your face is red you're dehydrated from how much you've been spitting and snotting and crying and your heart is absolutely torn open broken that's healing yep um (laughs) so you have to be willing to go through that first to heal anything especially money trauma because the most of the what is the paradigm for most of the people who have the money on earth right now is they are exploitative and greedy and uh completely in their fear and ego and completely have forgotten that we are all one source right 
So that is where, that is the people who are holding most of this energy, holding most of the money, that is the energy that they are holding. So what I'm trying to say through all of this is, this is a big beast. You want to talk about like money? This is a big beast. That's why I love it. It's such a complex, uh, multi-layered, multifaceted. So that's a very, what I'm talking about here is a very grounded way to look at it. But we also have the completely, I'm looking at like from the 3D look into the 5D. When I step now into the 5D looking at the 3D, like there's so much energetically to shift that then we will see that in our lives shift. So a lot of the times when we try to fix our money situation, we do it by 3D means, right? We're trying to, we're trying to get more money. That's not how you do it, babes. That's it's, you got to work in the energetic to, sh and then the, the 3D is going to mirror that. The physical is going to necessarily mirror that as within, so without. Um, it has to. It's a law of attraction. Life attracts like. It's just how it works. If you don't believe me, experiment for yourself. <laughs> so just understand fully where you're at, uh, the beast that you're up against, which is mostly a physical thing, but you can work in the energetic and in shifting your beliefs. This is shadow work, right? In shifting your beliefs, in becoming more conscious of how you treat money and how you receive money and how you spend money just continually, slowly, step-by-step, 1% step, more a day, striving to, to, to heal and to come into a more loving space with your relationship with money and how you think about money. And then, and then in that is like this whole deep, deep spiritual thing of remembering the abundance that you truly are. That's a, that's something that just it through, through what, through going through this process, one day it just comes. And you're just like, oh, I'm literally writing all of this. I'm literally creating all of this, all of it, 100% of my reality. Like sometimes things come in that I can't control them coming in, but I'm always in my choice on how I'm going to react, how I can flow with that and use that as an opportunity. Like when you finally, it takes so much willingness because of the amount of responsibility you have to take that you're always in your choice. And then you have people who are identified with their pain and their wounds, which is, that's where they're at right now, who want to hold on to them because that's what they think they are. And they, <laughs> then they're like, well, I didn't choose to be poor. It's like, okay, but you're choosing to stay there. You're choosing. Now, if, you know, I'm, I'm not saying that not everyone's at the level of consciousness that they can attend to these things, but some people are. And for those people is who I would say to, you're choosing to stay here though. You're choosing to not do this work. I've both of my parents, I saw them climb out of poverty. I, it can be done. I've seen it. I've seen it. I didn't have to do it for myself because of their gift to me in this way, but like nothing is impossible. Mm -hmm. They want you to think that it is. That's how they keep you where you are mm -hmm. and keep exploiting you. Mm -hmm. All right, I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that's amazing. Thank you I so much. Mad. I told you I'm passionate. Oh, I, that's amazing. I totally resonate with everything that you just shared. And I just want to, uh, to everyone who listens and maybe struggles with money, I just want to recommend this book. Uh, it's called Love Money, Money Loves You by Sarah McCrum. And it's a channeling of the energy of money as if money just speaks to you like, hello, I'm money. This is how to handle me. And I love this book so much that I made a deal with the author and I translated it to Polish and I'm going to be publishing it soon in Poland uh, because I feel like the Polish... Polish nation needs this message. Like we need more abundance because of all the wars and all the collective uh, consciousness traumas and and everything that was taken away from us and defense and poverty and all these things. Uh, we just need it. And this is really good start if you want to just build your relationship with money because money really is truly a loving energy. It wants the best for us. It's an energy of exchange. It really wants to support us. But if we are blaming it, it's like, oh, money, you don't come to me. Oh, money, you're, you're never, an, there's never enough of you in my life. And you just like complain and you just, you know, feel the 
the poverty, the lack all the time, then how can it come to you? It's like if you had a friend and you constantly complained about this friend not visiting you, this friend probably would stop visiting you, right? So if you just treat money as a friend, it's like, okay, how would you treat it? How would you go about it? How would you would you be grateful to it? Would you love it? Would you hug it? It's like if you can just shift this perspective, I think then a lot of things in your reality can shift as well. So and I love what you shared about the 3D versus 5D because I think that a lot of people are like, yeah, if I just do this and I take another job and I do this and I do that. Okay, yeah, sure. Maybe it's going to bring you some results because 3D, it's going to work. But what if you just embody now, while you're going to the shop, you're just going to embody the feeling of you being abundant. How would it feel for you to be abundant now? How would it feel to walk the street? How would you even walk? What would you think? What would you feel if you already had everything that you wanted? And then from there, this imprint of energy that you're creating, the more power, the more energy, the more emotion you put into that, the the closer to your actual reality is going to be. And this is the 5D manifestation. And then you don't even have to do that much in terms of like physical action because it's already there. As you said, it's mirroring in our reality. And then all these situations, all these people, these conditions, or just random, uh, quote unquote, random uh, people reaching out to you or random you know circumstances coming up it's just going to bring you where you want to be but you need to be that frequency you need to feel as you already are where you want to be and i think that's the tricky part right because we're like oh how can i feel like a millionaire if i have like five bucks in my in my wallet well i mean you're a conscious creator so you can take as you said responsibility for creating your reality and actually start now at least for a few minutes a day to embody this new frequency there's always something to be grateful for true so work with that yeah that's true and then start. the great feel like you have nothing yeah mm-hmm. that's so work, it'll snowball that's so beautiful yeah gratitude is one of the most opening vibrations to abundance ever so that's a really really good start for anyone who struggles and yeah i i could actually uh, talk to you for hours about the money and the abundance and the conscious entrepreneurship and everything but uh, our time is up now and uh, yeah i want to make sure that we finish on time so the last question what is the best way if people really resonate with you and they would like to see more uh, what's the best way to find you and see your content maybe work with you and join your uh, program and so on yeah, so um, my at is blissful x bohemian on Instagram and TikTok. Um, I also my my online mystery school, the portal is at the portal eleven eleven. Um, so just DM me or that account. Uh, our base tier membership, where we have live classes every night, is thirty three dollars US, so about a dollar a day every uh, every month. Um, and I run the academy every three to four months, taking about 20 students at a time. So just message me there. We have a August 29th is our next start date. Um, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so grateful for this conversation. And as I said, I haven't spoken to you enough because I have still so many questions in my mind and so many things that I would like to explore with you, but maybe we'll leave it for the next time, uh, our next conversation. But thank you so, so much. I'm really sending so much love and gratitude for this conversation. It's been great. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much.